Um, while I was shuffling the spread out, um, I have a message for you and, um, it's an image. So first of all, I see a person that's like, I, I think it's you, a person this big. Okay. And then next to it, it gets a little bit bigger and then it gets bigger and then it gets bigger. Um, so it, it's sort of like the, the Russian dolls where you open the big one and then there's a smaller one, but I feel like it's the other way in the past. You were like this. And now you have really, really progressed. And what I feel is um, it's your progression in life. You are at a point where you're accumulating a lot of knowledge. You have really tr um, made tremendous leaps and bounds when it comes to your career, when it comes to your professional achievements, when it comes to your ability as well to truly, truly love somebody, expanding your heart chakra, and also coming into a sense of uh, awareness about yourself. So I feel like in all areas of your life, you have really, really progressed. And I feel like the um, 2017 last year, I, I feel like there might have been some major situations that made you grow really, really fast that allow you to reach this point where you've learned a lot about yourself, about your place in the world, and about, you know, how to really, how to really work hard. Okay. So it's, it's all about progression. So what I feel right now that's happening for you is uh, as we, you know, round out this year, first of all, I feel like, and I'm, I'm getting like, um, shortness of breath when I do your reading too. So I feel like some of you are really, and you shouldn't be. There's this element of timing. Time is running out. I need to do more with my life or I need to achieve more or, you know, I'm getting older. Don't worry about these things. So I see you very anxious. I see you possibly um, playing hostess, having a lot of guests coming over. If it's the holiday season, you're anxious, you're running around, you're getting very winded and you have a lot of um, text messages, communication coming through. What time are we meeting up? So you're running yourself to the ground. You're trying to accommodate things. You're trying to accommodate other people. So take a moment to yourself. Okay. Spend some more time with yourself and, and just try to relax a little bit. So a lot of things will be coming at you and a lot of parties that you're throwing. Some of you are, you know, you, you have a, a really, really beautiful home and you're trying to entertain guests. And I just feel like there are a gazillion things to, to do, a lot of places to go, a lot of people to see, and time is so limited. And so you're, you know, you're winded running around. So that's something to be careful about next week. Okay. Uh, for those who are in the United States and are celebrating Thanksgiving, I just wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. And I feel like the energy is going to be a little bit hectic for you guys. I didn't see it with the other signs, but I'm getting like, you know, shortness of breath when I, uh, when I'm looking into this reading. So first of all, um, I mentioned before, some of you own property and I have here the King of Pentacles. This is a property owner. He's got a lot of castles, a lot of land, um, behind him. So it's somebody who has a property that is prime real estate. Okay. A property that will fetch a tremendous amount on the market. And I feel like it's, uh, for some of you, it's by accident that you came across this property. Some of you, you might have lived there for a really long time and you know it's time to sell, but you are clinging onto it. You're clinging onto it for dear life. You want to pass it along to your children. You want to retain it a little bit longer in hopes that the value is going to keep increasing. And I also feel like, you know, when I mentioned before, you were like this small and now you're getting bigger and bigger. Um, I feel like this property served its purpose, you know, for the past few years, you have outgrown the property. And so it's really important for you to not be afraid to let it go and move on to the next phase in your life. And I feel like some of you have some really, really big goals maybe wanting to relocate, maybe needing to get a new job, but the mortgage and the, this, it, 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 I, I feel like 
some of you are in a job, it pays really well and you're making really good money, but your heart might not be entirely in it. But you have this property and then the job came in and the job helped you pay for the property. And so you stay and stay in both places in, in that property or in that job because it's, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship. And then over time it, you got comfortable but now you're definitely thinking about looking elsewhere. You want a change in your environment and you want a change overall in the direction of your life. Some of you are contemplating a move. I do see directly south and I also see the, um, I'm not seeing north, I'm seeing south and then I'm seeing as well northeast, somewhere where there's snow or somewhere directly south where the, the weather is really warm. So I feel like extremes here. And um, the property is what's really keeping you stuck. Okay, it's really keeping you stuck. Um, the advice that they're getting, that I'm getting here, or the advice that your guys are trying to give you is, you don't have to relinquish it. You don't have to sell it. If you are attached to it, you can rent it out. So, you know, maybe possibly looking into renting it out. Um, I feel like for some of you, no offense, I feel like you're very territorial with your things. Um, so you might not want strangers living in what you perceive to be your space, right? It, not a lot of people like that, but sometimes we have to do it out of necessity. And sometimes when, when it's, we have already outgrown a situation, it's best to, you know, make contingency plans and, and do things differently. Okay. So, um, I see as well new work that you're contemplating or a job offer that's on the table for you. I have here the Ace of Coins, Ace of Pentacles, brand new job. Um, I feel like for some of you, you might be switching sectors. If you have been working in the private sector, you might be thinking about the, uh, the public sector. So if you're looking, if you have been working for I, I don't know if that's, it, it sounds self-explanatory, but if you, for example, have been working in a uh, private enterprise where there has been a lot of, you know, incentive pay, where your productivity is, is like measured, and then the more productive you are, the more they incentivize you financially to do better. So like sales, commission, bonuses, things like that to reward you. And I feel like it's... um. It's nice, right, to have the bonus, but it makes the environment very competitive. And then I also see this element about aging. No offense, Aries, but you're like, I'm getting older. I don't want to do this rat race anymore. And so I want to shift into, you know, uh, the public sector where they don't have the incentives, but the work is a little bit more stable. So I see that element coming through. And then I also feel like for those of you who have been working in the public sector, you're really excelling. You're, you're doing really, really well. And you feel like people around you are not, are not very motivated. So you might be inspired to go into the uh, private sector instead. So I see a switcheroo, like um, vice versa. And I'm also sensing as well um, some of you are thinking about even uh, working part-time, okay, reducing your hours, working part-time, because you might want to go into property management. You might want to go into, um, you might already have enough money. You might be thinking about retirement, and so you're working part-time trying to ease yourself into it, or you have residual income coming through property, and so you feel like you don't have to work as hard. So it's almost like I feel some of you are aware that your hectic lifestyle is starting to catch up with you. And so you're trying to slow down, hence the, you know, shortness of breath. It's almost like I want to enjoy my time. I don't want to be constantly running around, racing around all the time. I want to sit still and I want to enjoy the moment. And I don't want to, you know, just um, be on the move so much. Okay. Um... So that's what I'm, I'm getting here. Let me see. There's definitely, you know, trips and things like that. 
down memory lane. I feel like there was somebody in your life and um, I feel like this is the big love of your life, okay? The big, big, big love of your life, whoever that might be for you. It was like a long-standing love affair. You've been with them for a very, very long time. And um, this person is very loyal. And I feel like, you know, there, there are traits about this person that is very admirable. But then again, no one's perfect. There are also a lot of bad traits about this person that you might not want to admit to yourself. And uh, I have here a couple. Both are very independent financially. Both are very, very um, career oriented. So King of Pentacles and Queen of Pentacles, they might or might not be an earth sign, but either way, I feel like this is a couple and this is somebody that you might be with where both people are just, you know, working really hard, making really good money. Uh, make sure that you don't do so much overtime or they don't do so much overtime that the relationship kind of, uh, you know, like work and drive a wedge between partners. If you're absent for long periods of time, you can start to feel the emotional drift, okay? But either way, I feel like this is somebody that you really, really loved. And I feel like it's in the past. And you saw this person as Mr. or Mrs. Perfect. And since I have a lot of uh, female viewers, especially um, just a, a, across the board, I feel like, you know, for you guys, this might have been the one, the one you wanted to marry, the one that, that was like the, the big love of your life. And you saw a lot of good qualities in this person. They're smart. They're very accomplished. They're very reliable. When they say they're going to do something, they do it. Uh, you never have to worry about them straying because they're very faithful and very honest and very loyal. And for whatever reason, you know these things about them, that they're very honest, very loyal. And I feel like they're really, really good looking, very good looking. Um, and I feel for whatever reason, between you and this person, um, you got very possessive of them. You got very possessive of them. And you're not normally a possessive person, but this person triggers a lot of fears because, you know, you, you, you wanted the relationship. And then I also feel like um, they stir up jealousy within you. They didn't mean to do it. They're not flirtatious. But they're somebody that is really good looking. A lot of people like them. A lot of people want it to be with them. And they stir up a lot of anxiety, a lot of jealousy, possessiveness within you. And it, it was a really... Um, it was a very deep, long relationship between the two of you. And you really hung on to that person, like hung on very, very tightly. And I feel like you wasted a lot of time with that relationship. It didn't feel that way because you thought they were Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect. But I definitely feel there were, you know, no one's perfect. This person has traits that... that you overlooked, okay? Bad traits that you overlooked. Um, on the one hand, they could be very materialistic. They're very, very stubborn. They don't compromise, for example. And I also feel like they might have been a little bit arrogant. They might not be the most compassionate person. So they do have bad traits that you overlooked but, you know, you love this person, so love is blind. And I feel like you wasted a lot of time in this relationship. And some of you might have walked away from it. And um, this is kind of like the person that is the rubric that you use when you measure your new relationships. So let's just say, if this past person, let's just call them, you know, um, let's call them Bob, okay? Okay. Now you're dating Steve and you're comparing Steve to Bob and you're like, Bob is better because, you know, Bob is blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself and don't give yourself that excuse to not date or, you know, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy when we start comparing our past with our future and we're like, no, the past was better. So I, it just creates situations where 
things flop before they even get off the ground, okay? And especially, don't let this person have that type of control or hold over you. Because I honestly feel like there were a lot of things, bad traits about this person that you overlooked. Yes, they're faithful and honest, but I also feel like no one is perfect. And you, you're putting this person on a pedestal and they don't belong there. They definitely don't belong there. And um, there were a lot of hurt feelings as a result of this person. And you held on for so long. You wanted this fantasy with this person. I have here the Seven of Cups. This is the fantasy here. And I have the Five of Cups. This is the reality. Sadness, regrets. Okay, the one that got away. You have new love coming into the picture, but I, I feel like you still are not over this. And so, what I'm seeing though, Aries, is um, when this person left the picture, they kind of shook up your world and your ideals about marriage, parenting, love, and romance, I feel like it, it, it took a nosedive. It's almost like you don't really believe in those things anymore because this person's no longer in the picture. And the person has moved on. You're no longer in contact with them. So don't let them have that control over you. And um, we can't go back to the past, okay? Like I said... You started out like this, and then you got bigger and bigger and bigger. And honestly, when you were with this situation, and it could be work, or it, it could be this person, or it could be that property, it served its purpose when you were this small, okay? But now you're gradually getting bigger, and all of these things are no longer appropriate for you. But you're hanging on to the memory of it. You're hanging on to, you know, the, the fantasy of it or the ideals of it. But you're constantly progressing and you're growing and you're outgrowing the situation. So they're really telling you, you know, to, to leave it behind, okay? Leave it behind for good. If you have a property, you've outgrown it and you feel like it's really holding you back because now you can't move, um, rent it out. Find other creative ways to manage it, Okay. Um, if you're in a job and, you know, it was really stable, it helped you pay for that nice house, that nice car, whatever it is. Um, and you feel like I've already maxed out. I feel some of you have really maxed out on your ability to uh, get promoted, to get pay increases. Um, you've already learned everything you need to learn. You can do the work like blindfolded. You've outgrown the situation. Allow yourself to move away and do something new. Learn something new. Okay, you've outgrown the situation. Um, family. I, I have some, some like troubling news when it comes to family, like um, agitation, things like that. And especially from a family member who might be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Capricorn and Taurus come out strongly.